Hello, welcome to Slide Action's Trombone Toolkit. We're going to be taking you through all the different sounds that the trombone can make so you can understand it better and write for it more idiomatically. In this second video, we're talking about mutes, all the different kinds and all the different sounds that they can make. If you feel like we've missed anything or you want us to talk about anything further, let us know in the comments and we can make more videos. Okay, so one way in which the trombone can produce a different sound is via mutes. The name mute is actually something of a misnomer as only a few of the vast array of mutes available to brass players actually make the instrument quieter or mute it. Some mutes actually produce a more piercing sound that cuts through thick textures more than an open trombone sound would. Each type of mute has a different sound quality, which opens a new world of possibilities to composers and performers. In this video, we're going to take a detailed look at some of the most commonly used mutes and the ways they can be used. Most of these sound changing bell insert devices have been invented in the last 100 to 150 years. However, there are examples of muted trombones going back to the mid 17th century with works by Abraham Mergele and Dietrich Buxtehude. We're going to show you the basic characteristics of each mute, how it sounds on a melody, loud, quiet, high, low and more. Our first mute is the straight mute. So the straight mute is probably the most commonly used mute. If you see mute or sordine written in a score, this is often what it refers to. These mutes are known for creating a sound which could be called piercing, metallic, narrow and bright. Here's a few demonstrations of what this mute sounds like alone and with a group. Next up is the cup mute. The cup mute is like a straight mute, but with a cup on it. This creates a much rounder sound, quite warm, but still clear and bright, especially in louder dynamics. cup mutes, you can adjust the position of the cup to be closer to the bell to round off the sound further. Next up we have this mute, most commonly called a harmon or sometimes an extending tube mute. The Harman mute is one of the most distinctive sounding mutes. It's also the most flexible in terms of the variety of sounds that it can produce. It has an extending tube that can be fully closed, fully extended or removed entirely to create different colours. And additionally, the performer can change the sound of the mute with the position of their hand whilst playing. <laughs> The Harman mute with a closed tube has the sound similar to that of a straight mute, but with more fizz and vibrancy. The further you extend the mute or remove it completely, the more hollow the sound gets, losing its focus and center. This mute with the tube completely out sounds pretty cool. However, it becomes notoriously difficult to play in lower registers. <laughs> The 
Different brands give this mute different names, such as the extending tube mute. Since the name Harman mute is actually a trademark, uh, it's also sometimes called the wah-wah mute due to the sound it creates when moving your hand back and forth. However, they all mean the same thing. Here's the practice mute. The practice mute was invented for musicians needing to avoid irritating the neighbors while practicing. They are designed to reduce decibel levels drastically while still retaining flexibility and playability. While not originally designed for performance, they are now a useful tool for composers looking for extremely quiet brass sounds with next to no projection. Also, while playing very loud on these mutes, they can produce a very interesting tone quality. The bucket mute. So the bucket mute is synonymous with the sounds of jazz. It's like a cut mute, but even rounder and a little fuzzy sounding, almost smoky. It's very smooth and sumptuous. As you can see, it kind of functions as, like it's called, a bucket. It kind of goes around the bell and it's got kind of soft interior to really muffle the sound. This is really depending on the brand of bucket, but generally speaking, they're a bit more cumbersome and large, so might need a bit more time to attach or remove. Another mute synonymous with jazz and light music is the plunger. It's got its name because it is quite literally a drain plunger, hopefully unused. Similarly to the Harmon mute, the performer controls the sound of this mute by opening and closing it with their hand. It sounds quite warm when closed fully, and the player can use it to make extreme dynamic changes as it alters the projection of the trombone. of this mute to be aware of is that it has to be held while playing so the left hand is occupied meaning the trombonist loses the use of the valves whilst playing therefore the notes from low E flat to bottom B below the bass clef stave are unavailable for both tenor and bass trombone players this is a pixie mute this is most synonymous with jazz and it's not assumed that most orchestral trombone players will own one of these mutes, so it's worth talking to whoever you're writing for. The sound of the pixie mute alone is like a stuffy or muted straight mute with some interesting expressive qualities to it. combination, especially in jazz, is using a pixie and a plunger simultaneously. This is the talking trombone sound, often heard on trad jazz and Dixieland music. Here's a clip of the ultimate talking trombone sound. This takes serious experience to master.
When writing for mute, here's a few things that you should be aware of. Firstly, mute changes. Inserting and removing mutes takes a few seconds, so it's difficult to make extremely fast changes. If you're not sure, just ask a trombone player, but a good general rule is to allow three to five seconds minimum. It is possible to change a mute whilst holding a sustained note on trombone. The most commonly used notes would be in first position, in third position, but advanced players can work out techniques to remove a mute whilst playing in second and fourth position also. An alternative solution if you want a quick sound change while the performer is still playing is to ask them to play in stand. This is where a player aims their bell into the stand, changing the projection and the volume of the sound. When using most varieties of mutes, the low register is the most affected in flexibility and sound. Long notes are usually okay, but if you're writing any dexterous and fast material down on the low register, that's what will be affected. If you're really wanting to write for this sort of sound world, it's definitely worth exploring with the type of mute you're using and the player, as some mutes, the tuning is affected and it's often much more difficult to achieve. It's always worth remembering, if you're using any of the hand mutes, i.e. the ones that actively use the left hand to change the sound, plunger or harmon mute, the left hand is therefore occupied, so it won't be able to access any trigger notes. Straight mutes and cut mutes can be made of a wide variety of materials these days, usually made of metal. They can be seen in wood, fiber, or even 3D printed. These options naturally change the sound to give either darker, warmer, or sharper, colder sounds. In this video, we haven't covered every single mute. There are some rare mutes, including this one, the solo tone mute, and there's also the hat or derby mute, the solo tune is similar to the Harmon, but not quite as metallic, and the hat mute is very much like the bucket mute, but can be easily pointed in and out of. If you'd like to see another video on these, let us know in the comments. Ultimately, because of the directional nature of the trombone, anything that you put over the bell or in the bell will change the sound, and it's effectively a mute. For instance, in Mahler's second symphony, there's famously an occurrence of a hand stop notation for tenor trombone. This is normally associated with French horn playing, but it is achievable over certain registers. Putting your hand in the bell creates an interesting sound. Thanks so much for tuning into our video about mutes. As you've seen, they can be used to produce so many different sounds. We love using them as trombone players. If there's any suggestions you have about any further videos or any depth that we could go into any other mutes or any of these mutes, let us know in the comments. Don't forget to tune in to the other videos in our series, Slide Action's Trombone Toolkit, for more tips on trombone playing and trombone writing.